Welcome. I'm Dan Looker, business editor with Successful Farming Magazine, and with me today is Steve Johnson, Farm Management Extension Specialist for Iowa State University, and we're going to be talking about crop insurance and some of the changes that are taking place uh, starting this summer, some things that you may already know about, but uh, it's good to review. Uh, Steve, first of all, I think uh, there's uh, both good news and bad news on changes in dates and, and deadlines for farmers on crop insurance. Can you go over some of those? Sure. Uh, farmers are still going to be certifying acres, uh, but that date that's typically been uh, June 30th in some states, mm -hmm. and July 15th in other states, is going to be July 15th. So if you planted a spring crop, you need to certify acres at your local FSA office, Farm Service Agency. That deadline is July 15th, so it gives an extra couple of weeks, especially those states in the upper corn belt, to get to the FSA office or get an appointment in advance. But at the same time, I don't think you want to delay certifying acres this year. And Dan, so, so you can go in earlier. There's sure, you no, go no in as soon as to, you're done planting. You can go ahead. And a uh, lot of people may be done pretty early this year. That's what I would so, say. Is, yeah. And so I think you're going to see some people want to go ahead and get the acres certified and not pushing the deadline. Sure, sure. Um, well, there is another deadline that's actually earlier, right? And what, what's that one? Yeah, and that deadline happens to be uh, uh, crop insurance premiums. Uh, crop insurance premiums are, are going to be due uh, before October 1st. And what happens is uh, this wasn't the dealings of the crop insurance industry, but these are some of the changes that are taking place. You report your acres before July 15th, mm -hmm. but then there's a, another date, uh, and, and that's the date uh, for billing. So the crop insurance industry has from July 15th to August 15th, 30 days to put this information together and get a bill out to you and by the way, uh, your crop insurance premiums do, not in October, in September. So mm -hmm. farmers are going to have to realize that they're going to need to pay their crop insurance premium about a month earlier. Okay, by the end of September. By the end of September, on October 1st, a penalty attaches. So be thinking about your cash flow, you know, maybe getting mm -hmm. some new crops sold so mm -hmm. you can make some of those uh, premium payments in advance. But those are changes that... Uh, again, we're driven by the USDA Risk Management Agency. Okay. Um, I guess there are also some changes in, in the, the way the fields are actually being identified. Uh, can you go over that a little bit? Uh, well, kind of behind the scenes. You know, yeah, yeah. since 2010, we've encouraged farmers to make sure you're keeping track of all fields. Um, mm -hmm. What crop did you plant in that field? Um, as well as the number of acres in the field and the date you planted the crop. And so the change that's been taking place has kind of been playing out over the last three years. Um, you're still uh, reporting on your acreage certification, FSA Form 578. Mm -hmm. You're reporting, if you would, by a, a farm serial number, a mm -hmm. farm number, by a tract number, and by a field number. And that, that data has all been collected by FSA. And that's nothing really new. That's something people have been doing for years. That's right? been going and, on for a long time. You know, and the fact, number's still the same. Probably and, over 25 years we've right, been reporting right. our acres. What's going on in the background is the FSA is then assigning uh, what we call a common land unit. Mm -hmm. uh, and this unit is a specific identifier to that field. What it's going to allow the USDA agencies to do, the FSA, the, the uh, Risk Management Agency, the RMA, the Natural Resource Conservation Service, the NRCS, all to use a, a common database. And that database will have fields and it will identify that field. And then behind that object will be all the, the data that farmers are, are used to reporting. But what becomes important is that you're, you're keeping track of what crop by field and the date that you planted the crop. There are potentially in the long run some advantages for the farmer for doing this. I don't know if we want to get into a lot of detail about that today, but I think um, the, the, this field identifier could be used later on for uh, maybe speeding up um, part of your uh, reporting requirements for crop insurance. Sure. Is that, We're already is that seeing right? the crop insurance mm -hmm. industry use this. Mm -hmm. um, so the fact is, is that many people can call their crop insurance agent and say, hey, uh, do I have a common land unit? And uh, mm -hmm. you can actually see the boundaries to your fields. 
And so some of the advantages that we're seeing is that, yeah, uh, it actually makes it easier to keep mm -hmm. track of acres and dates that the crops are mm -hmm. planted, um, makes it easier uh, for the adjuster you know, mm -hmm. to come out and say, hey, I know that field and there's the boundary to that mm -hmm. field. So it speeds up that collection process. But more importantly, I think the advantage of the CLU, it ties to how farmers already manage data, by fields, mm -hmm. by field boundaries, right. Right. and now think of precision agriculture. Mm -hmm. So the fact is, is that suddenly planting maps start to match up with that field boundary, yield maps start to match up with that field boundary. But before we get there, let's take a look at some acronyms. Yeah, yeah. okay. <laughs> you know, we couldn't have a, a government program without exactly. acronyms. Exactly. And so in the acronyms, uh, you know, common land unit, CLU, I think becomes important. Um, uh, SIMS is the, the database, if you would, that ties all these pieces together. SIM stands for Comprehensive Information Management System. And we were talking about that earlier. That's uh, really be kind of behind the scenes. That's not something that farmers are necessarily going to be able to No, I don't think so. You mm -hmm. might go to your FSA office and say, well, I need to download that information into mm -hmm. SIMS. Mm -hmm. So you'll start to hear that. Mm -hmm. uh, so I don't think that's going to be one that you know comes to light. But there is another one, and it's an AIP. And, you know, mm -hmm. I'm used to hearing it all the time. It's approved insurance provider. It's the crop insurance industry. Okay. So in a lot of the verbiage, you'll hear that, uh, you know, does your AIP have access to that information? So uh, the AIP, the crop insurance industry, again, the approved insurance provider, and the FSA, the Farm Service Agency, are going to be able to see very common data. Let's take a look, if we could, of what this data looks like. Uh, I've come up with a, a little bit of an analogy of reporting acres by CLU. And again, uh, farmers reporting the way they've been reporting for years. Mm -hmm. Prior to 2010, a farmer would simply report 103.1 acres that were planted on that farm because we were primarily keeping track of that information for FSA, for direct payments or countercyclical payments in the farm program. And in 2010, um, the request went out that you're keeping a little more specific information. Uh, we need to know by field number how many acres were planted and what date did you plant that crop. Mm -hmm. And what you begin to see, again, in this graphic, is that farmers were asked to, to provide a little more specific information. We're managing by the field, and mm -hmm. I think that's where we're going, Dan. I think mm -hmm. the common land unit is going to allow the federal government agencies, USDA, to manage by fields. And, and I want to encourage farmers to think about managing by fields. The, the common land units going to allow us to do that. I think a lot of farmers already are managing by fields. And I, uh, so I would agree. Nice to see the uh, federal government catching up. So, Well, thank you very much, Steve, for sharing that. And uh, hopefully uh, there'll be some real benefits to having to learn all these new acronyms. Sure, no problem. Again, the challenge is, is about 50% of those acres uh, will be in CLU units uh -huh. this year. Uh -huh. By 2016, 100% of all of our land will be in common land units. So again, those unique field boundaries, contact your FSA office regarding acreage certification. Mm -hmm. If it's CLUs and maybe some examples of some maps that can be printed out, in many cases your crop insurance agent uh, would be able to provide that information. In any sort of coverage, contact your crop insurance agent. Sounds good. Thanks for joining us today and we'll be talking to you soon again about uh, crop insurance.